Hey everybody, uh, my name is John White. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at Expedient. I'm really pumped to do this talk today because it has nothing to do uh, really with my regular day job. Um, so yesterday I did uh, the VM Underground opening acts and we were talking about uh, career development there. And one of the things that I mentioned in there is there's always you know, some sort of technology or some sort of problem you're unsure of in your life. And uh, you got to figure out how to get past that and eat it because it's no, no use to you long term if you're afraid of it. One of those ones for me was cloud native. I've been an engineer for a long time, started as a developer, moved into infrastructure, and everybody was talking about this cloud native and what a cloud native application uh, looks like. So I said, okay, I might as well go ahead and figure out how to actually build a cloud application because that's the only way I'm going to learn uh, what a cloud, applica cloud native application means. So today I'll talk to you, uh, our, my process of actually going and learning that, as well as then uh, show you the live site and uh, you can actually play with it too. All right, so what's the deal with cloud native? Everybody's talking about cloud native. You heard it uh, today in the keynote. Everybody's really focused on it. Um, why should you care? What do you care about? Why I care at least. Well, on the business side, everybody's coming up and saying, okay, if you build a cloud native application, it's gonna save you money because you get to use this cloud thing. Okay, that's one of them. On the resume side of it, from a personal development, if you start playing with containers, serverless, microservices, these are all things, the buzzwords that everybody wants to hear, this is an opportunity and a place for you to go and, and, and enhance your career. On the lead side of things, uh, building infinite scale applications is obviously pretty cool. Um, it's everybody's been wanting to do it. That's something that we all need to do uh, because we have a lot more mobile users. We have a lot more users than we ever have. And on the last thing, and this is the most important for me, why I wanted to do cloud native, because I could actually uh, troll for less. By moving to an invocation model, I didn't have to set up servers to actually go and run my application. I could actually do build an infinite scale application for pretty cheap, so I could make fun of the guy that I'll show you in my application uh, a little bit cheaper than I would if I had to build servers for it. So the way I eat an elephant when I learn, I actually do two things. I obtain and I apply. And when I was obtaining this time, I really broke it down into three phases. So I needed to make sure I had a platform to develop on, I needed a cloud platform to go on, and I used AWS for this, uh, this demo, this, this cloud native application I was building. And if you don't know, there's awesome self-paced labs out there on AWS's site, they're free, you can go and do that. So I spent a lot of time actually building um, things through those types of modules first and get, using their starter modules to get going. The next thing I need to know is a programming language. I was familiar with uh, writing C and Perl, and so I just chose Python, because I said, okay, that needed to be, you know, it seems to be a pretty popular language everybody else was developing in. And if you haven't seen it, uh, Google has a whole developer education site that you can go to, and they have classes. So the, the, uh, the Google classes here take about, um, I think if you, if you do a few hours uh, every week, they take about a month to complete. I think I finished it in about a week and a half and it teaches you everything from the basic of understanding how to install Python on your laptop to start coding into actually developing Python applications. Again, that's all free and something they have out there. It's actually a lot of cool uh, live videos and then demos that you can actually do inside of their environment. The last thing that I needed to obtain is actually, you know, the, the core fundamentals of cloud native were microservices. So I watched um, self-service courses and uh, Kelsey Hightower from um, Google actually did this course that I showed here and it talked to you all about microservices using Kubernetes so I could learn kind of the frameworks there. Adrian Cockroft actually, uh, one of the, the major tech leaders and visionaries of Netflix, he's inside of this as well talking about his kind of journey and what, what he needed to learn to make sure that he could understand how to do cloud native. He actually built cloud native so he's a great person to learn from. So you can take a look at all these links, they're awesome. I think they'll, they'll have this on YouTube as well, so if you didn't get a chance to, to copy them down, you can take a look at it. But it was my way to kind of obtain all the information and knowledge I needed to start to build a cloud native application. So the next idea, well, the next thing I needed to do was apply this. So I needed an idea, and like everybody else, I wanted to build a website that inspires the world. And uh, you'll see after I, I, I show you, it's a little tongue in cheek with the, the guy that I actually made fun of inside of my, my application. He's a very inspirational guy, one of my coworkers, and somebody who has a lot of fun. So my next phase that I needed to do was kind of sketch this out. So I had all this new tooling, all these new things that I learned. I needed to kind of build something out. So I knew I needed to build a website. I needed to have some randomization because I was actually gonna go and bring in some different information. I wanted it to be a little bit more dynamic. 
And I knew I needed to, I, I was going to add video element to it, so I needed to figure out how to actually use a CDN inside of AWS. The last thing I needed to do was actually build it. So this is essentially uh, what I ended up building at the end of the day, and I'll blow it up for you here. <clears throat> so if you see on the top, I'm saying, okay, we have an infinite scale, users on the top side of things. So if you start breaking it down from the top down, we had a few different actually applications that I had to build. So I'm using Route 53, so that's DNS inside of AWS, and I broke that down into three areas. I have SAM videos, I have SAM, and then I have API. So I wanted to make sure I was building an application that I had a front end, end interface for, but really anybody else could build a front end interface for. So uh, SAM videos is how you actually view the videos um, from the website and how they actually get served to you. They come out at the end of the day out of S3 buckets. And that's actually where, if you go to the SAM dot, which is actually the main home, so your, your index page for the whole website, that's actually being hosted out of S3. So I didn't spin up a web server, I didn't do anything like that. You can actually take an S3 bucket and actually apply it uh, to be public on the internet. Now you can't do um, server-side scripting on it, it has to be all client-side, so I actually had to use JavaScript and I had, a, had some help from internal teams at Expedient to kind of help me out there to actually create the rest of the website. Then on the API side of it, I use the API gateway uh, inside AWS and I use Lambda to actually provide uh, serverless framework, so something that I was actually only using uh, invocation-based, if you're not familiar with that, it's only, it's only actually be, I'm only actually being charged for it when I'm actually using and consuming that function. There were some other things in wrapper services that I had to have around it, so certificate manager for SSL, and then Cognito to basically, uh, I have user identity on it, but right now I have it basically just turned on to anonymous so that anybody can view it on the public internet. So you can see, I mean, a cloud native application is somewhat complex. I mean, I have two, three, four, five, six, seven different services that I had to learn and understand how they work inside AWS to kind of make this, uh, make this website work. So let me show you what it is. And you can actually, this is an audience participation as well, so grab your phones, grab your iPads, grab your computer. If you go to sam.askjohnwhite.com, you can actually see it, but I'll bring it up on the big screen here too. <clears throat> All right, so this is Sam, meet Sam. Sam is, uh, like I said, one of my coworkers, very inspirational guy. Uh, he's full of quotes and one-liners like you've never heard before, so I wanted to make sure, again, like I said, I wanted to inspire the world with my application. I really wanted to make a difference in this world. And so I wanted to bring Sam to everybody out there, and I wanted to make sure that if I, if I did a talk at VMworld, that it would scale and nobody would, you know, nobody would sit and have to wait for Sam because he's always available for you. So there's two different functions you can do in here. So there's quotes, and Sam's full of them, so most important, just cash the check. You can obviously tell that Sam's a little bit more of a sales motivated guy. All right, so we have another one. Get out in front of our skis. Again, I'm not even sure what the, really that means. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I feel like if you're in front of your skis, you might fall, but he says it on a regular basis. Uh, buyers are liars. If there's any salespeople in the room, you probably know this one. So Sam's full of them. So I have a whole bunch of uh, randomly generated Sam quotes that I'm actually going and presenting. And these are all living inside of Lambda functions. So there's a randomizer I wrote inside of, uh, inside of the S3 function. It's in Python, it's very simple, but it brings and grabs these different quotations. Now, you know, when I first built this website, I said, okay, the text is kind of cool, but it needs to be better. And um, well, what's real fun too, and if you, if you want to do this, I, it's, it's available, uh, the API front end, if you just go to api.askjohnwhite.com, you can actually uh, bring this into Alexa, so Alexa can actually say these back to you, which is really exciting. So if you want to start your day here, you can actually continue to develop off of this. But like I said, the quotes were one thing. I wanted to make sure that we got, um, you know, really the true vision of Sam out there. So we created all these little snippets, and you can't hear the audio, uh, but if you go home, you know, you're sitting, you're laying in bed, you're thinking, man, I had a hard day. You watch a few of these videos and you'll be inspired to really get going for the next day. But there's a whole bunch of these videos. They come in and you'll, you'll see, Sam's a, a big, boisterous guy. And this is, uh, I can't even remember what he said on this one, but it's, it's comical. It doesn't show on this screen, but he's actually slamming a basketball into a basketball hoop at this time. So he's achieving his goals with whatever he said. So take a look at this, but this is all serverless. Um, I actually have it, uh, I was running uh, different dashboards inside of CloudWatch, 
uh, inside of AWS. And so I was looking at how long it was taking to actually execute this. So when I take and, and hit, this, uh, hit the quotes button, it's going and calling a Lambda function, and it's taking about 0.28 uh, milliseconds to actually uh, bring this up. So it's extremely fast, extremely agile. Everybody at this conference could all hit this at the same time right now, and uh, it would just continue to scale. And there's a, a pretty awesome cost economics uh, benefit when you start to build things in invocation instead of just actually building servers. So check it out, sam.ashjohnwhite.com, and uh, I'm sure you'll be inspired. All right, so what did I learn here? Because um, you always have to learn something. Well, one, I'm not afraid of cloud native anymore. I get it, I understand it. I, uh, I have an application that still continues to scale, and uh, I, can, I have that out there and running, but I did learn that uh, building a cloud na na native application is really tough. Um, as you saw, I had to learn you know, how to use AWS. I had to learn um, how to write Python. I had to learn how to write actually microservices frameworks because I'm talking to all these different things. And uh, then I actually had to go and build it. And when I was building it, I probably spent, you know, what you see there, which doesn't seem like a very complex application, right? I have probably a good 40 hours into building it, testing it, making sure it works. Um, so I also, just for, you know, just to understand timelines, I built uh, just a regular dedicated server running Nginx, and I built this website on it, and it took me maybe 40 minutes tops. So it's a significant increase of time that you need to spend, but by spending and investing that time in the front end, um, you can get that infinite scalab scalability, you can get that uh, economics of cost that's really different than what you're doing today. Uh, it's funny though, I, I talked with a lot of businesses though, and they say they're gonna move all their applications to cloud native, um, you know, you'll ask, the, you'll ask, they'll say, okay, we have 500 applications. So if I think about that in my estimation, you know, we're talking about hundreds and thousands and, and thousands of hours to actually move those applications and get them in the cloud native. It's gonna be hard to migrate. It's gonna be a lot easier to build and go. So if you're, if you're running into that challenge inside of your business, I'd say maybe start at some of the basics and then figure out where you need to go in the long run. The invocation is super cheap. So I run this website, we use it internally, and I created um, uh, IoT dot buttons as well so that you can actually get these um, emailed to you if you want, so they're around the office as well. And uh, it, it costs me you know, uh, a few pennies a month to actually run this website. Now think about it, if you were running a server, if I was running one EC2 instance or one virtual instance out there, it's gonna be at least 10, 15 bucks a month to run the smallest instance that's out there, and it doesn't have the scalability into it. So doing the invocation, moving into Lambda functions, super cheap, definitely a ton of benefits there. And the last thing, one of my biggest lessons learned, and this is something that I, I think is gonna be a big shift for a lot of people, uh, the cloud infrastructure engineers, of tomorrow, they need to be able to code and be able to understand infrastructure. So if you're a straight developer, you got to learn infrastructure. If you're straight infrastructure, you got to learn the basics of coding. That was the only way I was able to put this together. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the you know, knowledge that I, I had in my past was able to help me kind of build this out and make this a lot easier, but you have to have both of them together. And it, it reinforces the need to have DevOps, have all these types of you know, new wave of, of trying to build an application to you know, handle whatever business task you need because you have to have a balance of both sides to actually make it work. The operational side is another thing about it. I mean, I, I went and was building, you know, how do I monitor something like this and monitor an application? You don't know what's important yet um, because we never did it before. You know, in building storage and building VM environments, you know to watch for latency and to watch for CPU queuing and ready and stuff like that. In this world, you have to worry about cold starts. And most people probably aren't even familiar with cold start, but that's the time it takes to actually get a Lambda function up and running to then send back um, whatever, whatever data that you need. And that's something that I'd have to start to think about if I ever wanted to scale this application up. So that's, uh, that's my talk. I hope you uh, learned something. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here and uh, talk to everybody here. Um, if you have any questions, I'm always available. I have my LinkedIn and uh, Twitter in the presentation. You can check it out on YouTube. And uh, I'd love to keep the conversation going. Thanks, everybody.